During World War II, with the help of Alan Turing, the Brits unpacked and deciphered the German code and were able to know what they were going to do in advance. Occasionally, they would have to make tough military sacrifices in order to prevent the Germans from knowing that they had the code as an overall strategy towards winning the war. They didn't want to give this secret away. And thus, unfortunately, a certain number of soldiers might have been put in harm's way and sacrificed for the overall win of the war. In chess, you don't put all your resources towards protecting a pawn at the expense of a queen. In life, we don't go and punch that neighbor who is severely angering us and making life a living hellhole because we recognize that there are going to be secondary consequences. Yet, the left today is always saying if it just saves one life, and this was their justification for the continued lockdowns after the two weeks to flatten the curve. Wearing a mask has become a tribal sign where some people don't want to even take it off even though they've been vaccinated for fear that somebody is going to take consider them a conservative. And these are the people that claim that they follow the science. Ha ha ha, follow the science. You know who followed the science? Ron DeSantis, governor of Texas. Did they just get lucky? No. They actually saw that the lockdowns were ineffective in terms of preventing the disease. And despite the fact that Florida has the second oldest population in the United States behind Maine, they have done equally as well as California, despite having the most open state during this entire time. Meanwhile, Governor Gavin Newsom of California has forced businesses to shut down. He has ruined people's lives by forcing children to stay home from school at behest of a political favor to the teachers unions. These people that want to continue to say, if you save just one life, it makes it all worth it. Oh, we're so close. Why don't you guys just keep masking up? Because first of all, it's an individual decision and those decisions affect us most personally. So we are the ones that are putting ourselves at risk. And if you feel that you cannot expose yourself to the public, then you can by all means feel free to stay home in your cubby hole and watch TV. And once again, in terms of the lockdowns, nobody on the left wants to consider the secondary effects that were going to be obvious. You want to protect the elderly. You want to protect just one life. Well, what about all the lives were ruined because children were forced to stay home as, from school, as I previously mentioned, and the parents that couldn't go to work and were staying home in a one bedroom apartment with two children for prolonged periods of time and scared to go outside because of the manipulation by the media to frighten you and instill fear into you. What are the secondary effects of this? Increased alcoholism, increase in child abuse, suicides on the rise, unfortunately. But nobody cares about that because they don't consider the secondary effect. They're more interested in virtue signaling to the rest of their tribe, and we have divided along tribal lines, to the rest of their tribes that they're good and that they support the lockdowns, despite the fact that it was two weeks to flatten the curve. And now, what is it, a year and three months old? Is this what we want as a nation, to live in fear for the rest of our lives? Go out there and live and consider the fact that there are going to be secondary effects to every decision that we take, that we make, and that you should do, you should estimate, you should see what is coming down the line. If I do X, Y is likely to happen, and if Y happens, then Z happens. And when we consider this and we can decide the risk variables that we're willing to assign to each potential outcome, then we can decide for ourselves what it is that we want to do. And this does not have to be a collective decision. If you want to go out there and you think that in California, when they arrested the surfer, the paddleboarder, who was a hundred yards offshore at the beginning of the pandemic because he dared to defy them, it's a power grab because he poses no risk to society a hundred yards offshore and they arrest him. Please, Consider the secondary effects. When you punch your neighbor in the nose, you're going to have troubles. When you protect just one life at the expense of businesses, of children, of their well-being, of their development, of their socialization that they're supposed to go through in school, you're depressing them. You are creating ripple effects that will reverberate far into the future for our great country. 
And I say great because I'm on the assumption that we can overturn the psychology of you crazy people that have demanded lockdowns all this time and want us to live in fear because you do. We should not be living down to the lowest common denominator, which is the people that live in fear through their entire life. This is not the way that mankind was meant to live. Peace out. If you guys are new, subscribe to the channel, hit the all notification bell and thumb up the video. Have a fantastic day.